Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to thank the organizers and especially to Stefano for the invitation. And so uh, uh, I would like to thank Keith for his talk yesterday because he defined almost all the things I have to define here. So he will spare me some time. And then, so uh, let me state the theorem, the main theorem. Is that right? Readable? Okay. Okay, so let MG be. So let us consider a compact surface of genus greater than two without focal points. I will define this in a moment. This for me means a C infinity surface. G is a Riemannian metric on the surface, a C infinity Riemannian uh, metric. And then, then uh, there exists. Uh, homeomorphins, H, well, let's say sigma from T1 to T1. This is the unit tangent bundle of the surface. And uh, an expansive, uh, let's say, first, conti continuous expansive. Let's say psi t from t1 to t1 of m. This is, no, it is not a homeomorphism. This is a continuous surjective. Okay, continuous surjective. Okay. Such that so sigma phi t is psi t sigma, where phi t is the geodesic flow of. Okay, so this is a theorem. And uh, the main theorem. And uh, so uh, some definitions first. Uh, I will uh, be more precise in some of the definitions uh, Keith gave yesterday. So P1 is the unit tangent bundle. That is the set of points in the surface and vectors tangent to the point such that the norm is one. Uh, so geodesic flow, I mean, okay, so first, uh, the, a pair PV is called, I mean, it's in canonical coordinates in the tangent bundle. So this is P in the manifold, and this is V in the tangent space of the surface. So this is the surface, this is P, and this is V. And uh, uh, so the geodesic flow is uh, okay, so from it acts in the unit tangent bundle and it sends the point PV to the point in canonical coordinates gamma PV T gamma PV prime T 
where gamma PV T is the unique geodesic such that gamma PV zero is P and gamma the derivative of the geodesic at zero is V. So this is we have another there are no colors, okay so this is something like a okay. This is gamma. Okay. Uh, and uh, what else? So uh, let me define first no conjugate points. I mean, uh, first, uh, uh, before no four points. So, ah, thank you. So, uh, MG has no no conjugate points. If exponential map is non singular for every B in the manifold, and then uh, no focal point is a subset of manifolds with a, with a conjugate point that is fine. What is the best thing? The shortest, perhaps, perhaps not, not the best, but the shortest way of defining this is uh, the following. Uh, every Jacobi field J uh, such that J of zero is equal to zero, and the derivative, I mean, non-trivial Jacobi field with uh, which vanishes at a point uh, satisfies uh, that the derivative is always different from zero for every p. You know, case this is perhaps the best way to define. I mean, there is a more geometric way to define. Equivalently, spheres are convex, are strictly convex in the universal covering. And though with the pullback of the metric G, okay? So G is pullback. Of G by covering map. This is okay. So this is the okay. So uh, they are very close to many folds with no with no with no uh, with non-positive curvature, but there exist examples of many for without focal points admitting some regions of positive curvature. So this is, I mean, this is a category. So what we have is that non-positive curvature is subset of no focal points. And this is uh, no conjugate points. And there is, well, I will, talk later if I have time. There is an intermediate category here, uh, interesting for the talk, that, I mean for the subject, that is called the manifolds with bounded asymptote, okay? There is sort of in the middle here. So, uh, okay, I think I defined it, everything. And then, okay, so let me, let, let me uh, comment briefly the theorem here. When, uh, when you look at the, at the statement here, you have a semi-conjugal, semi a, a, a continuous surjective map. Uh, 
preserving the orbits of the geodesic flow and an expansive flow, preserving time, this is somehow rigid, you see? Uh, because, in the, I mean, what it is known is that, let's say, I mean, uh, uh, a famous paper by Tignis, uh, it is known that every, every analysis of flow in a cipher fiber bundle, fiber bundle is topologically equivalent to the geodesic flow of a hyperbolic surface. I mean, a, a surface with constant negative curvature. And this equivalence does not preserve time, okay, in general. And moreover, you have rigidity associated to the length spectrum. Okay, what does it mean? Uh, I mean, many people involved in this, in this, in this object, Otal, Jean Pierre Otal, for uh, many folds with negative, compact many folds with negative curvature. Then uh, Krogh, Christopher Krogh, Albert Fatih, and Feldman for surfaces. Uh, okay, what they prove is the following. So suppose that Mg uh, B, uh, compact surface, genus, greater than two, without conjugate points, and M, G, zero, the same surface, another metric, with no positive curvature. Riemannian metric or Riemannian structure with non-positive current. Then, if mg and mg zero have the same length spectrum, market length spectrum, mark. then they are isometric. So there is, I mean, if, when you see a, a, a statement like this, you immediately think of the result. So the conclusion here is that, the, that this flow is not the geodesic flow of any Riemannian metric, okay? <laughs> it cannot be possible. Okay, so, uh, and uh, then I will, I will try to, okay, so this, I, I, I will sort of uh, divide the talk into parts. The first part is sort of topological part. Uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, in, 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 I mean, in a few words, is to define a quotient in the unit tangent bundle to kill the non-expansivity of the flow, to get an expansive flow. This is a sort of, you will see, is somehow the most, uh, I mean, perhaps it would be considered the most naive approach to prove the thing. And so you would, uh, you would be, you know, willing to not to believe that it, that it works. <laughs> okay, but it works. And, uh, and then, in the second part, I will uh, talk about some consequences in the, in the, I mean, regarding the theory of uh, measures of maximal entropy. And uh, this is, I mean, this, I will, and let me say this is a joint work with Catherine Gilford. And, uh, 
And uh, this is more or less in the same spirit of Keith's talk. Uh, we were uh, trying, we were starting uh, looking at the, uh, Gerard Nippert's work about the, you know, the, the, the uniqueness of the uh, measures of maximal entropy for rank one manifolds, you know, positive curvature. And we thought that for surfaces, it should be a simple proof, okay? And, uh, and simple proof in the, in, in the sense that it, it should exist something closer to Bowen's approach to uh, prove the same thing, okay? And this is what we get. So let me explain. Now I'm going to uh, go into the details of the proof. So some ideas, some main ideas of the proof. So I have to talk a little bit about the, uh, I mean, horror spheres. So, uh, I mean, they were mentioned yesterday, but I will be more precise. So, uh, if you consider, uh, let me draw the universal covering here. This is, well, with the pullback of the metric. And then you consider a geodesic here. It is, let's say, gamma PV. Let me shorten the notation so theta is a point in the unit tangent bundle of the universal covering that you take as a desic here and then you define the Bussmann function of this geodesic is what's associated to the point is the following is the limit as t goes to infinity of the distance from gamma theta dx minus t. t. Okay, so you pick gamma theta t, x is here, and then you measure the distance from x to here, and then t is the distance from gamma theta zero to here, and then this, I mean, it is proved that this limit exists and gives a C1 L function, meaning that the C1 um, derivatives are Lipschitz. I mean, there are lots of properties of this function. In, in um, they were, I mean, I'm going to mention many results of, many basic results of the theorem of manifold with no conjugate points, mainly stated by Eberlein and Pessin in the 70s, okay? So this is sort of, well, let me, perhaps I have, what is the, okay. Perhaps I write a big theorem with the basic things. So theorem, a good reference for this is Pessin. And uh, so, uh, so B theta is, C1 Lipschitz uh, level sets are, uh, but this is horse spheres, which I denote by H theta T. I mean, level sets, you get a level, you get a foliation of the universal covering by sort of spheres at infinity, called or spheres, because if you forget about this limit, then the level sets of this function are just the spheres centered at this point. So uh, if you let t go to infinity, it's like you, if, like you would be letting the center of the spheres to go to infinity. And then it is proved, I mean, the, the, the limit of these spheres exists and is the whole sphere. And depends on the point of the geodesics, so this, this dependence is expressed here by T. They are equidistant. Uh, spheres, they give an equidistant foliation of M tilde. So uh, if, let me define the, uh, so a little, 
different notation. This is h with a little h. Oh, no, perhaps so. With here, this is the set of points p minus gradient at p of b theta, where p is in h theta 0. This is a set in the unit tangent bundle uh, of the universal covering. I don't know how to call this or a sphere too. Because this is this, the set of the Ahura sphere endowed with the normals. <laughs> because if the Boltzmann function is the, because if the Ahura spheres are the level sets of the Boltzmann function, then the gradient is perpendicular, and the field of, I mean, the, I, I, I didn't, I didn't put here, but the norm of the gradient is one. And then the set of unit normals, inner unit normals, is the set of, is the field of gradient, okay, of the gradient of the Boltzmann function along the horosphere. And then the, you have a, 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 a flow that is tangent to this gradient here. And this flow is formed by asymptotic geodesics, forward asymptotic geodesics, okay? Geodesics. So now I'm talking in the, for the case of surfaces. In the case of surfaces, compact surfaces, without concrete points, uh, and genus. So the flow tangent to minus the gradient is a flow by forward asymptotic. And uh, the same thing, well, uh, this, the collection, I'm going to define another thing, FCS of, I mean, this is the union of theta in the unit tangent bundle of uh, FCS theta, which is is the union t of phi t of h theta is a continuous foliation. Okay, so what I'm saying is if you take this set here, a tilde, and you saturate by the flow, then you get a, a, a surface. And this collection of surfaces is a continuous foliation in the unit tangent bundle. Okay? So you can make the same thing for the past, and then you get sort of a Same thing. I mean, if you, this foliation defines FCS and H, H, let's say union of theta, okay, of H theta, define foliations, continuous foliations in T1 of M2. I mean, you just uh, quotient those foliations by the natural quotient between the uh, tangent, the, the unit tangent bundles, universal covering, and unit tangent bundle. This is more or less the uh, horocycle foliation. And then you can make the same thing for the path. So uh, 
let us define let H, uh, well, H with uh, H minus here of, well, let me, well, let B minus theta, D define uh, same, uh, this is the limit. in x is the limit as it goes to minus infinity of the distance between gamma AB t x minus t. Or I think it's the contrary. I mean, this is minus modulus t. So you, you make the same thing for the past. So this is gamma. And then you make take x here, and then you take gamma dv t here. I make this okay. So level sets are let's say h minus t. Let me define h. I will put a. I will put here perhaps an s. And then an S, and then I put here a U. That is the collection of points P, radiant of this, and this is in H, H minus T zero, and then F uh, C U is the collection of, I mean, union of T in R, phi T, H, U, theta. Okay? So, uh, let me draw the picture in the let me draw the picture of this. I mean, you have all these objects can be defined in the universal covering of the <laughs> unit tangent bundle. And then the picture will be something like this. You have here the orbit of theta. Uh, this is, this would be the geodesic flow restricted to F CS. CS uh, stands for center stable. Yeah. And then the FCU would be something like this. Okay. I need perhaps these colors here. So the stable set is something like this. And the unstable set is something like this. Okay. This will be the picture in the case of an Ossoff. Okay. This is an Ossoff case. If the geodesic flow is an Ossoff, then then this construction gives the invariant so many folds of each orbit. But in the case of many folder surfaces with no focal points or no conjugate points, what you get is, in general, something, well, something like this. I mean, instead of just getting one geodesic here, an intersection of both submanifolds, then you get typically a set where they coincide. I mean, they are tangent. And this set might, might be a, a, a strip, a whole strip of biasymptotic orbits of the flow. OK? This is the, let's say, Uh, 
intersection of CS theta and CU theta is a strip. Asymptotic geodesics. And this strip is handled with a foliation that is invariant by the flow, consisting in geodesics, okay, uh, I mean, in the case of the manifold with no focal points, of course. If MG has no focal points, uh, this strip is flat. Each strip is flat because you may have many. I mean, in each, okay, strips are flat and end up with a sort of invariant foliation by geodesics. So imagine that you have a flat strip in our tool, let's say, and then you have this picture here. Sort of the geodesic is here. Now this is universal covering. It's I mean, better for pictures. And then in each for each T, you have as a geodesic in intersection of the uh, this horosphere and this horosphere. Okay, and this foliation here, let me call this, let me call I theta the intersection of uh, H, S, theta, and H, U, theta. So I'm looking at this. I'm looking at the, at the lift of this strip in the tangent bundle. Okay? And then what I'm going to do to uh, kill, okay, so uh, this is clearly, I mean, this, the, the strips are clearly an obstruction for uh, to expansivity, okay? So what I'm going to do is to define an equivalence relation in the, unit, in the unit tangent bundle to Q strips, okay? And then equivalence relation to Q expansivity, non-expansivity. So, and the equivalence relation is just, uh, let's say, uh, let me call sigma the equivalence relation. No, okay. Two points, let's say theta and, and C and psi, I don't know, N are equivalent if, if and only if psi is in the same I theta, or theta is in the same I C, or I psi, I don't know. <laughs> so I define an equivalence relation where a class is just each segment of this sort, okay? Each of these is a class. And then define the same extents to the unit tangent bundle, and then let X be the unit tangent bundle, quotient by the equivalence relation. And then the theorem is that this is a manifold. Okay. And this, I mean, it's not obvious because when you think a little bit 
about the structure of strips, then oh, I will construct something like a cross section of this picture here. Uh, so uh, let us consider the following cross section. Sort of cross section of the flow, this is flow. So I will pick theta here, and then I will take uh, a subset of H S theta large enough to contain the class of theta. Okay? This is I theta. Okay? Let us, I, I will consider a, a, a piece of the vertical fiber through theta and make the same thing for every point here. So since uh, the, 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 the center stable uh, set uh, give a foliation, then it's sort, this, is, this is a sort of uh, you know, trivializing picture for the foliation, for the center stable foliation, and then this is the, okay, this is the center stable foliation. And then the center unstable foliation. In this trivializing picture for the center stable would be something like this. I mean, they, but a lot, lots of tangencies or, or coincidences, non-trivial coincidences, between stable and unstable foliations may appear. Okay. So what I'm what I'm claiming here is that if you quotient all these coincidences. Then you still get a manifold. This is here. And this is not, not obvious. OK? <laughs> so, uh, and OK, so, uh, OK, in five minutes, let me uh, at least say that uh, I'll give you in a minute uh, 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 an idea of the proof of this. Uh, once, I mean, even if, you don't, if you, you don't know what is, I mean, if this space has a nice structure, a nice topological or metric structure, then you observe that it is endowed with a flow. That is the quotient flow because the classes are preserved by the geodesic flow. So it is, so remark. There is, there exists a quotient flow. Quotient flow. This is, let's say, psi t. Okay? And if x, uh, if you get us some, something like a, a metric space structure for x, then we would expect psi t to be expansive. Okay, that's that is what what happens. And then, and more 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 than that, if it is true, then this expansive thing, this expansive flow, would be something like like the expansive flow of of our dreams, or of, of, I, I might say uh, of Bowen's dreams, because. This expansive flow would inherit all the good properties of the geodesic flow of the surface. Uh, you, know, you know, in Eberlein in the 70s, proved that the geodesic flow of, I mean, I won't define visibility manifolds, but uh, vis visibility manifolds include compact surfaces uh, with no conjugate points and genus greater than one. 
then Everline proved MG compact I will state with like Everline visibility manifold. Then the geodesic flow is transitive. I mean, there is a dense orbit. Is topologically mixing. Meaning that for every UV open set, there exists, let's say, R in R such that phi s u intersects v for every s bigger than r. This is topologically mixing. Then, uh, I mean, uh, horocycles are minimal. I mean, lots of, lots of properties, OK? And then, since uh, if, OK, if we get some structure for this flow, and it is expensive, the, we would expect it to have invariant sets, because the quotient of invariant sets would play the role of the invariant sets of the expensive thing. So uh, you would expect to have a local product property for this flow. Okay, and this would imply that there is shadow lemma, and there is, uh, and combining the shadow lemma with the with the topological mixing property and the transitivity, we get the uh, specification by closed orbits. And then Bowen's result says then, so, so let me state theorem for, for an alpha T, for psi T, psi T uh, uh, has local product structure, uh, specification by closed orbits. And it will get all these properties here, topologically mixing, uh, transitivity, everything. And then Bowen's implies that the measure theorem, and this is the second part of the, of the proof, of the talk, sorry, the measure of maximal entropy is unique. Okay? This is a nice application of the thing because you get it straightforward from Bowen's, I mean from what you already know from the theory of the geodesic flow of visibility manifolds and Bowen's, you know, classical work about, you know, variational principles. And then how to get the uniqueness of, because this was, I saw what, it, what was the, 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 the main, let's say, application of this is that the, the same happens for the geodesic flow of the surface. So, perhaps to finish, <laughs> time goes fast, indeed. <laughs> so, there, phi t has a unique And this is a combination of, of the previous result and, I mean, of course, proof, previous result, plus a, a remark, a very nice remark made by Buzzi uh, Fisher, a lot of people here, San Marino and Vasquez. Uh, saying essentially that, 
I mean, they, they, they look at, at, at flows they call an extension of an expansive flow. And uh, they give some conditions to, uh, to show that if uh, uh, the, an expansive flow has a unique measure of maximal entropy and the extension has some properties, then the measure of maximal entropy for the extension would be also unique. And these conditions are fulfilled here for the flow, and that's all the, the, the sketch of the proof. So I, oh, my time is over, so <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs>